Welcome everyone to the Detox Essentials for Healthy Women webinar. My name is Heather Schofield and I'm the Education Director and Medical Advisor with Biomed. I'm really excited to be talking about this subject tonight as it pulls together 15 years worth of studying and experience um, from a detoxification and a European biological medicine perspective and this is what I'm really excited to be able to share with you tonight. Okay, so let's get started. <clears throat> so, for toxins in our world, there is now an estimated 85,000 toxic chemicals that are used in the U.S., and a large portion of this is also used in Canada. The statistics are usually U.S. statistics, but they are very relevant also then to Canadian statistics as well. Um, of these 85,000 chemicals, only about 200 of them have been tested for safety, and interestingly enough, most of the time they've been tested for acute impacts to adult males in industrial settings. So the safety testing hasn't necessarily been done um, with uh, women and uh, things that women are going to be more in contact with as far as chemicals go. Um, also, <clears throat> finding in every U.S. citizen, uh, and this is according to the Center for Disease Control, 104 environmental pollutants. Um, in umbilical cord blood of newborns, um, they have found 287 environmental chemicals. And on average, women use 9 to 15 personal care products um, on or within themselves on a daily basis. And within those personal care products, there could be upwards of 100 different chemicals that they're being exposed to and not necessarily <clears throat> going to be all safe ones. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and then finally, um, an interesting statistic as well. Generally, as an average, 70% of all housework is still done by women, and so therefore there's that potential increase for exposure to toxins uh, due to chemical, um, chemical and cleaning products and other household um, products as well. So then when we're talking about women and toxicity, one of the things to know is that there are different aspects for women and men versus toxicity, and women are more susceptible to certain types of things, and they're more susceptible in general to toxicity, and let's talk about the reasons why. <clears throat> so generally, toxins, when we're talking about toxins, this is a broad category, 85,000 of them, <laughs> um, they can lead in women to things like hormonal issues, uterine fibroids, fertility problems, endometriosis, um, polycystic ovaries, autoimmune conditions, obesity, diabetes, allergies, asthma, cancers, neurological disorders, Alzheimer's, and the list goes on and on. Uh, also, women's health issues in general are on rise. We tend to see much earlier puberty, um, and the earlier puberty is coming in two ways. Um, on average, uh, girls, when they're entering puberty, are tending to start developing breasts two years earlier than they did 40 years ago, and on average are getting their period four or five months earlier than they used to 40 years ago. Um, other types of issues on the rise are infertility. Now one in six couples um, are having fertility issues. Uh, there's an increase of birth defects, there's increased rates of breast cancer, and there's also increased uh, rates of autoimmune conditions. <clears throat> one of the things um, that can be part of the problem is, again, some of these household cleaners and pesticides, they contain endocrine disrupting chemicals. And so this is why you can see that there's some very specific hormonal type um, issues uh, that um, are very directly related to toxicity and toxins. <clears throat> Another interesting uh, part, uh, fact is that women, we tend to carry 10% more body fat than men, so therefore we have more capacity to be storing fat-soluble toxins within the body. Uh, there is in the obesity epidemic uh, discussion that one of the reasons behind the obesity epidemic is an increased toxic load in our environment, and it's our body's way of trying to store and sequester away the toxins. So. While it's not only a toxic issue, of course, there's lots of other issues that are all connected with obesity, um, having an increased toxic load in the body can be part of the picture. So therefore, when 
working with clients trying to lose weight, um, detoxification, especially just very simple liver, kidney, lymphatic detoxification is really important to help with the body being able to cope with um, less fat capacity. Um, also, uh, as far as potential exposure of women with toxins, we use personal care products more than men overall on a daily basis. 25% women and only 1% of men are using over 15 products a day. Um, also, I mentioned before, 70% of the housework tends to be done by women, and so there's more uh, exposure to cleaning products, unless you're using all natural cleaning products or vinegar uh, and baking soda at home. Uh, also, occupational exposure. Uh, so in salons, like hair and nail salons, 90%, sorry, 97% of um, the people working in salons tend to be women. Massage therapists can be exposed to different uh, lotions and chemicals with that. Uh, housekeeping, 89% um, of the housekeepers are women. And then cosmetologists, and so there's lots of different occupational exposures. And then also, interestingly enough, women of color tend to be also at greater risk uh, for exposure to toxins due to using specific uh, type of personal care products like skin lighteners, hair relaxers, and different types of dyes. Um, also, African-American women have a higher risk of breast cancer and a higher incidence of lupus. And then finally, the other thing that also is super important about all of this when we're talking about women and toxicity is biologically, we are the first environment, so our body and our uterus, for the next generation um, with uh, raising or growing children essentially in our body. <clears throat> and so in this environment, the cleaner our personal body is in our environment it is, the less likely we're going to be able to be passing these toxins on to our newborns. Um, and so toxins and chemicals can pass freely uh, between the um, fetus through the womb and then also through breastfeeding. And there was a study done. <coughs> excuse me. There was a study done showing uh, in an Inuit population that there were 40% increased uh, amount of flame retardant chemicals in breast milk. And um, Finding flame retardant chemicals in breast milk is actually a very common thing because often it's in our clothes and in our bedding and uh, in our environment as well. So these are all these types of statistics for women and toxicity. So let's start to talk then about detox strategies that are going to be very specific for women. So here's some detox strategies that are very specific for women. What we're going to be talking about tonight are emotions and emotional detox stress and autonomic nervous system, organ detoxification specifically, and organ detoxification, when we're talking about the liver and the gallbladder, has very big implications as far as hormonal balance and skin as well. We're also going to be talking about acid-base balance, candida, and heavy metals. Okay, so first we're going to start with the emotions. Um, before we start with that, let's talk about this toxic keg. Okay, so uh, I'm sure you've all heard of this concept of the toxic keg, where we can handle so much for some time. And life, we're dealing with lots of different stuff. We're dealing with stress. We're dealing with emotional conflicts. We're dealing with um, things in our food. We're dealing with inflammation. We're dealing with fungal and viral and bacterial toxins and heavy metals and chemicals and deficiencies and a whole host of things. And we can handle so much for so long. And at some point, when this keg starts to overflow, we start to get symptoms. And so once, um, <clears throat> when you're looking at the whole picture, uh, it's really important to understand that we can't just do physical detoxification um, or organ detoxification. We have to look at things in a much bigger picture. And so one of the big things to look at, um, in addition to all the physical types of toxicity, is also the stress and the emotions. And often, because that plays such a huge part, once the main burdens, like the stress and the emotional conflicts, are resolved, then the body is going to be able to detoxify and regulate much better on its own. So with toxic relationships and emotional stress, let's first talk about this. Um, and this is one of the things I think as practitioners, unless you're having a practice that deals with a lot of mental, emotional health, 
we may not always be talking about toxic relationships, or perhaps we are in our intake and when we're following up with patients, but not necessarily doing something about it. And so there are going to be some strategies and some techniques that I'm going to be talking about tonight to give you some tools to know how to deal with some of this type of stuff um, from the emotional perspective. And one of the first and easiest things um, to start looking at is the different organs and the neg negative emotional component of that organ. So this is something we're pretty familiar with, um, liver and liver fire or anger. And so there's one of two ways you can do this. I was talking with a practitioner last week, and she often talked about the idea of looking at the emotion and uh, then being able to understand what organ that she'd be needing to deal with or to detoxify. So if a patient was coming in and talking about anger, then she would think um, that the liver needs to be addressed as well. And so this list here, um, is the common type emotions, uh, negative emotions that can be associated with the different organs. So for example, the liver uh, is associated with anger. The lung is associated with fear and grief. The stomach can be associated with worry. Kidney is often associated with fear or criticism or shame. Adrenals, anxiety or defeatism. The bladder uh, can be pissed off. Um, and this is one time I think you're allowed to swear when you're talking about it in these quotations. Um, <coughs> the lymph has to do with losing track of the essentials of life. The colon is about holding on to something or not letting go. The joint is about stiffness and not being able to move forward in life. The pancreas, lack of sweetness in life or resentment. The gallbladder, which I don't have on this list, is also a resentment remedy. The heart is lack of joy. Thyroid is humiliation, or um, it can also be grief as well. And then the prostate is giving up. And so um, with these emotions, uh, when you're talking to a patient, if they're talking about one of these or these are pinpointed, think about the organ that potentially is behind it, and then easily just do a detox on that specific organ, and then you're going to be able to have some physical movement of the emotion as well. So let's just talk about anger in general, because one of the things that is important to understand is that there is this toxic emotional component. and these emotions can have a really big and negative effect within the body as far as physical and mental emotional health. So in the case of anger, if there's anger that's not being able to be expressed or there's this frustration that's swallowed, over time the emotional energy in the body is inhibited. The flow becomes inhibited. It becomes repressed in the subconscious and then you get this thing called an aggression inhibition behavior. And so over time then, the anger still may be felt, the anger is often swallowed, uh, but then it starts to lead to things like uh, low energy or lack of energy, leading to burnout, which is adrenal exhaustion and fatigue and just general burnout, depression, and then also GI conditions. So you can see that this anger that's not able to be expressed properly or is swallowed can then lead to adrenal burnout, exhaustion, depression, and GI conditions. So one of the things if you want to be able to tackle these types of symptoms in long term is the anger also has to be addressed. Liver detoxification is one of the ways to help address the anger uh, and getting the liver moving the anger. The other thing, if you're not familiar with RubaMed testing and with the Reba device, this is another really good tool to use to deal with old unresolved emotional issues, including things like anger. And so if this is something that's new for you, um, please be in touch and I'd be happy to talk about um, RubaMed and that therapy in itself. There's also lots of great webinars that have been recorded and are available on our website to learn more about it, including a RubaMed online course. Uh, tonight, uh, we don't have the time to be able to go into more detail about it, but just so you know that there's this really uh, amazing tool to be able to help with these old emotional issues. Uh, and so then, in addition to the emotional stuff, 
Uh, one thing that's also really important to understand is that when you've got these stresses or old emotional issues that are still causing stress or an active stress, um, then you can get the autonomic nervous system out of balance. So you can have a physical or a psychological threat, um, emotions are triggered, this messages to the autonomic control center, and it turns your sympathetic nervous system on, it turns the parasympathetic nervous system off. If you get further input uh, as far as threats or stresses, then this continues this cycle and you end up in a chronic stress patterning. Uh, then what happens with the sympathetic and the parasympathetic is if you're in this chronic stress patterning, this can lead to inflammation, it can lead to acid-base imbalance, and then you can get all kinds of symptoms that end up stacking on top of that. Um, in addition to um, things like not sleeping well, not getting into deep sleep, always on cortisol, adrenaline, and uh, not having enough time to get into that um, relaxed um, and rest kind of place. So uh, being in these stress responses um, can be very detrimental for long-term health. When we're dealing with the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system, uh, luckily, uh, Rubimed, within the Rubimed line, we've got two really excellent remedies that help to get the autonomic nervous system rebalanced. So if somebody's in a hyperfunction, um, and this is seen as restlessness, sleeplessness, jitteriness, uh, hot temperature, sweating, uh, diarrheas, tension, having a hard time falling asleep at night because you're always thinking, um, Simvita would be the remedy to help relax the nervous system and just put the body into a better relaxed state. If the patient is in the opposite, so they're in an autonomic hypofunction and this is an exhausted state, Paravita will be used then for an exhausted state, inability to recuperate, and after long periods of stress. The types of symptoms you would see are fatigue, exhaustion, adrenal fatigue, cramping, chilliness, uh, hypothyroid-like picture, sluggishness, constipation, so the whole body in more of an exhausted state. Uh, okay, so those two remedies specifically are for helping to get the autonomic nervous system back into balance. And then just a, a stress protocol, toxic stress. A stress and exhaustion protocol. Um, we talked, I just talked generally about RubyMed therapy. This is, um, can be used to help resolve old unresolved emotional issues. Uh, and then also if there's a very clear exhausted or very clear restless go, go, go picture, you could use Paravita or Simvita. The other types of remedies when we're dealing with stress and exhaustion um, often in addition to the autonomic nervous system, the adrenals often play a role. And so adrenum um, is used to restore the adrenals. Uh, it's not a stimulant, rather it is a restorative formula. And then you've got ASF, which is a herbal and vitamin formula that also has rhodiola in there um, to help support the adrenals. Um, and always when you're dealing with exhaustion, you wanna add in a B complex. Uh, because our body burns through Bs, especially B6 and B5 when we're in stress situations. And then finally, Avena Sativa uh, is a calming the nervous system remedy. And it really works, especially if people are having a hard time falling asleep at night, to kind of calm the whole central nervous system and be able to get into a relaxed state. So those are some really great um, products that are available through Biomed that can be very helpful in stress and recovery from exhaustion. Okay, so the next thing that's specifically for women that we wanna talk about is organ detox. And as I mentioned before, part of the organ detox is also gonna be very relevant to the hormones, to the skin, to uh, respiration, to acid-base balance, to breast health, uh, to dealing with high estrogen, dealing with heavy metals, uh, potentially we'll talk about heavy metals and candida in a little bit, um, adrenal, uh, dealing with the adrenals. And so uh, there's a huge aspect. When we're talking about detox in general, you can do a lot in the body to get things running better. And so we'll go there now. Okay. So Nesman, if these are um, formulas that you're not familiar with, 
then I've got an easy list here of our primary and secondary amunctories. And so our amunctories are our, our detox organs. The primary ones tend to be the ones that we detox with first, and the secondary ones um, need the primary pathways open so that they can detox as well. So you've got your liver, and the, the remedies are specific for it. Uh, so this is liver and gallbladder. Um, the remedies are ahepatica, cardis and cardinera. For the kidneys, it's solidigo and buco. For the intestines, there's a product called 3C, which is a complete colon cleanse. And then liver remedies, especially when secreting bile, will help with intestinal detoxification. The mucous membranes, uh, LAPA is very helpful for that. Uh, the lymphatics, lymphodrop and LAPA are also very helpful for the lymphatic system. For the skin, Luvos, which I'll be talking about in quite a bit of detail later, um, is very good for skin detoxification. And of course, the skin is classified as the third kidney. And when the kidney pathways are overwhelmed, often skin symptoms start to show up. So kidney remedies are also important. As far as secondary amunctories, the nose and the sinuses, uh, hydrosis nasal spray is very helpful. Bronca is helpful for the lungs. Absinthium is helpful for hydrochloric acid production in the stomach. Uh, Rubus is helpful for the pancreas to increase enzymes and also to help um, blood sugar metabolism. For the bladder, solidago. And for the reproductive organs, female tonic and sebal serolatum. So we're going to be talking about some of these remedies tonight. And um, again, on our website, uh, there's all kinds of webinars that are very focused on the Nesman drainage remedies if you want to learn more. Home toxicology according to Dr. Weckaweg. Uh, this is to understand toxicity and how it essentially can accumulate in the body. So you've got these endogenous and exogenous toxins and they get absorbed into the bloodstream um, and then through the blood they should be detoxed out via the liver gallbladder the intestinal tract, the kidneys, the lungs, the lymph, and the skin. Um, if the detox pathways are not open or need some tweaking um, or get overwhelmed, then what can happen is the toxins will end up being deposited into the connective tissue and the extracellular spaces. Depending on where these um, end up getting um, placed and also depending on how the, your personal body is or our patients' bodies are, um, where toxins get stored in the extracellular spaces will become an area of constitutional weakness. So some, for some people, it's their lungs. For some people, it's their lymphatic system. For some people, it is their GI tract. Uh, some people, it is their liver, gallbladder. And then there's, also awesome, there's often these tendencies for these then areas to get clogged up when things get stressed in the body. Uh, when it moves from extracellular, then it can move intracellular and then negatively affect the DNA and the cell nucleus. This all then gets um, into a, a pattern. And so <clears throat> when we then have a new organism or a new child um, or we've got new cells replicating, um, they can adapt our constitutional weak areas from our parents and then cause these inherited toxins and newly acquired endogenous and exogenous toxins to kind of go through the same pattern again and again. So it's really important, again, as a general overall health um, protector to make sure that these detox pathways not only are open, but they're supported and often supported on a regular basis. On a regular basis, I'm, you know, often a few times a year is a really good idea to be doing a big detox uh, because then that's supporting the body's self-regulation. Okay, <clears throat> so let's talk about phase one and phase two liver detoxification. <clears throat> the liver plays such a huge role in uh, our detoxification overall, and there's a lot of different things that are involved in it. So it's really important that we're also then supporting our liver so that it can continuously keep us clean and keep us healthy and also keep us balanced. So the liver filters two quarts of blood every single minute. That's a lot, a lot of blood, a lot of filtering, and needing lots of different um, enzymes and different components uh, in, as far as nutrition and nutrients to keep the liver working well. So we 
end up with these fat soluble toxins that go through phase one liver detoxification <clears throat> through that intermediate metabolism, um, which often has to do with glutathione. Uh, the toxins become more toxic until they can be rendered in through phase two detoxification into water soluble waste. Um, once they um, go through that phase two component um, and are water soluble, then they, the toxins are often rendered, um, and often through methylation, rendered neutral and are excreted via the kidneys and urine, the gallbladder, liver gallbladder and bile, and uh, stool from the intestines. And so B vitamins play a huge role here, um, and so do many of the amino acids. <clears throat> folic acid or folate is also really important. And if you're dealing with clients uh, that have methylation issues, and so that is an enzyme, the methyl, uh, methylene tetrahydrofolate reductase enzyme. If it's not functioning properly, then um, needing some extra help with extra folate uh, and B6 and B12 is really important, uh, especially in methylated forms. And so Biomed does have uh, B12 folate uh, as a sublingual lozenge, and it is methylcobalamin and methylfolate, and um, those two ingredients then also really help with this phase one, phase two liver detoxification. Uh, okay, so when we're talking about the liver, <coughs> indicators for liver detoxification. So indications that one needs a good, solid liver detoxification. Things that you may see are abdominal bloating, pain or discomfort, uh, especially over the liver area, increased fat, uh, fat around the middle, having inability to uh, lose weight um, or unexplained gain, uh, weight gain, uh, trouble digesting fatty foods, or if your gallbladder has been removed, or if there's issues with it, acid reflux, bad breath, heartburn, uh, heat in the body, overheating, liver fire, so overheating and perspiration, uh, skin conditions like acne, rosacea, liver spots um, that show up as we get older, uh, cravings, blood sugar issues, moodiness, hormonal issues, and I really wanted to highlight the hormonal issue component because this is where uh, the liver is very um, connected to hormones. When there's excess hormones that need to be processed, if the liver is not able to process them uh, like excess estrogen, then we end up with uh, symptoms. And so the liver is extremely important in um, hormonal balance as well. Uh, other types of things that you may see are congested sinuses, fluid retention, chemical sensitivities, multiple chemical sensitivities, which I'll talk about in a bit, a lightweight when it uh, comes to drinking alcohol because they're not able to process it very well, and then um, insomnia waking between 1 and 4 a.m. From the emotional side of things, negative emotions uh, can be anger, which we talked about, irritability, frustration, resentment, complaining, fault finding, and hepatitis, just out of uh, interest sake, is a resistance to change with a lot of fear, anger, hatred, and rage uh, type feelings. Um, the liver is really important to process emotional toxicity. So not only are we processing um, physical, chemical toxicity in the body, we're also processing emotional toxicity. So liver detoxing with our patients is really crucial for um, overall long-term health. And so within the Nesman line, there's three liver remedies, and I'm just going to go through them briefly. So we've got ahepatica, and it is a liver detoxer with secondary gallbladder and intestinal um, components to it. Generally, you don't tend to see a lot of constipation for this remedy, um, but rather uh, no constipation. And what it does is it really gets the liver secreting um, more bile and stimulates bile flow, and that helps to de increase the detoxification of the liver. And so this would be something you're using um, just as a general detox. If you're seeing any symptoms that we just talked about, if you've got patients that you know have an increased toxic stress load um, due to environmental chemicals, 
um, or any liver type issues, then this would be the remedy to consider for them. We also have Curtis, and this is a liver gallbladder detoxification with more emphasis on the gallbladder, and often constipation is part of the picture for choosing Curtis. Uh, it helps to increase bile flow and bile secretions, and with that, it helps to improve fat digestion. <clears throat> and then we've got Cardinera, and Cardinera is a little bit different, so it is a liver detox formula, but it's also a high cholesterol formula. It is a natural artichoke extract, and interestingly enough, Lipitor, um, which is one of the statin drugs, is a synthetic artichoke extract or mimicked after that. And so Cardinera makes a really nice, natural, and very safe, no side effect alternative to lipid blockers. Uh, one of the things it does with the liver detoxification, it increases bile production and bile flow, it improves fat digestion, it gets the intestines moving, and it helps to get more blood flow going to the liver. Uh, through all of this, uh, it has positive effects on fat metabolism. It helps to uh, the body to process excess cholesterol and brings down cholesterol and triglyceride levels. Uh, one thing to remember, though, uh, with cholesterol, and we'll talk about this in a minute, is stress. Uh, stress often is one of the big reasons behind cholesterol. Whether it's acute stress or it's long-term, low chronic stress, um, often cholesterol increases due to that. And, okay, so I do have a protocol here with cholesterol, so I wanted to talk about cholesterol a little bit more. Um, and also, what is the connection between high blood pressure, cholesterol, type 2 diabetes? And often this is the cascade that happens over time. Um, and if you trace it back, you'd be able to see this with your patients. So the cascade is there's an initial stress or there's um, long-term chronic stress. Uh, maybe there's emotional issues that are going on, and then with this stress, you get an autonomic nervous system dysfunction. So we talked about the autonomic nervous system going into a hyper or hypo state. Uh, <clears throat> the stress and the autonomic nervous system dysfunction then starts to lead to acid-base imbalances in the body, which then leads to inflammation. Inflammation, especially of the blood vessels, starts to lead to higher blood pressure. Uh, when the blood vessels are inflamed and the blood pressure is higher, then you start to get internal tears in the blood vessels. So the body is making cholesterol in order to try to repair um, the insides of those blood vessels. Also, you get immune cells, lymphocytes that become something called foam cells to try to um, block all these tears up. And when you get all this inflammation happening, then you get less ability for things to be able to absorb across the vessels. And uh, this includes insulin. And so you start to see things like metabolic syndrome or pancreatic insufficiency and type 2 diabetes. So this is a very typical type cascade that you can see um, with cholesterol being a big part of it. So when you're dealing with cholesterol uh, and you're dealing with some of these metabolic type syndromes, it's not just about using something like Cardinera to reduce the cholesterol. There's some other things you need to do in the background in order to be able to really get control um, of the cholesterol or what the root cause of it is. And so not only do you want to work symptomatically, um, but you also want to work on the inflammation. You want to work on the acid-base imbalance. And if necessary, you need to work on the stress as well. And when you do this kind of approach, when you're working with cholesterol, then you'll actually have very good long-term success with your patients. Not only will their cholesterol levels come back down into a more normal range, uh, but they also will be healthier overall because inflammation and acid-base balance and stress has been addressed. So the kind of protocol to go uh, for something like this is you would use the Cardinera to help support the liver uh, and also help to reduce the cholesterol overall. Mm. The right C is a vitamin C powder, and because it gets absorbed into the blood, it's a really great way to reduce inflammation in the blood vessels. You also want to target stress levels, and so a vena sativa or adrenal support formula, depending on what's appropriate, in not all situations, if somebody's got um, stress that's a nervous system type stress, it's not always an adrenal issue, and not all adrenal issues tend to be a nervous system specific issue. So 
it's it's important to try to be able to determine what's going to be more appropriate, calming the central nervous system or addressing the adrenals. And so that's um, why I've got there as an or, um, depending on what's going to be appropriate for your patient. And finally, and also very important, is really getting to that acid-base imbalance, which is also an inflammatory component. And so using basic powder or basic tabs in order to reduce the acid in the body and then also to put more mineral buffers uh, so the body's not pulling it from the bones. Uh, okay, so that's the cholesterol protocol um, according to biological medicine and according to homotoxicology and also according to psychosomatic energetics all combined together. Okay, so let's talk about the kidneys then. Here's an indicator that somebody needs a good kidney detoxification. There's fluid retention, edema, swollen ankles, uh, changes in the urine, uh, difficulty, blood, more or less frequent, color changes, foamy or bub bubbly, increased urgency for needing to urinate, um, also feeling tired or sluggish, pain in the legs or the lower back, bad taste in the mouth, rashes itchy rashes and skin conditions. As I mentioned before, the skin's the third kidney, so um, if you're seeing a lot of skin stuff, then it could be an, a kidney thing as well. The types of negative emotions, uh, fear, criticism, shame, failure, um, lack of strength, or reacting like a kid. Those are the types of um, emotions that are associated with kidneys. And um, if you have got a patient that um, needs kidney detox, and in a lot of cases, liver, kidney, lymphatic, if you do them all together, you're doing a really great whole body detox. And so Solidigo is one of the kidney remedies. It's a really powerful catheter or open up of the urinary pathways. Not only does it work with the kidneys, it also works with the bladder and urinary tract infections. And it's very helpful for kidney, bladder, urinary tract support and drainage to get the toxins out of the tissues and then just to keep the, the urinary path pathways flowing and preventing crystals and such. We also have <clears throat> Buco, which is the other kidney detox remedy or drainage remedy from Nesman. And this <laughs> increases circulation within the kidney. Um, it does have a mild diuretic effect. It helps to protect the coatings um, and the path of the urinary pathways. It helps prevent stones. Um, and it definitely is for not so much an acute kidney or bladder situation, but more a little bit more of a chronic um, long-standing or prevention of kidney stone um, formula. And then finally, um, let's talk about the lymphatic system. So, um, a stagnant lymph system is a really great place for toxic accumulation because as the um, fluids uh, come out of the capillary beds, um, if the lymphatic system is not able to basically absorb those and get those back into circulation, then you can get a lot of toxic accumulation happening in the connective tissues. So indications of needing a really good lymphatic detoxification are things like fluid retention, cellulite, edema, any types of pain and inflammation, swollen glands, congestion, uh, sinus, ear, throat infections, chronic chronic sinusitis can be um, an indicator that the lymphatic system needs a really good drain, uh, weakened or impaired immune system. And then finally, if you're dealing with patients with multiple chemical sensitivity, lymphatic system is going to be one of the places that needs a lot of drainage and detoxification. In addition, for the multiple chemical sensitive patients, uh, you've got the lymphatic system that needs to be addressed. You need to do liver and gallbladder with a very specific bio um, detox. So gallbladder is really important, liver is really important as well. You need that bile to get moving and to get um, less thick and kind of flowing again. Um, also chlorella is really important because it does contain a lot of the amino acids that are needed in the phase two liver detoxification. And it will help to keep the uh, microorganisms down and it helps with candida and it helps with different toxins like 
plastics and with heavy metals. And so chlorella is a really important um, component with multiple chemical sensitivity. Uh, and then also digestive support, uh, things like digestive enzymes and hydrochloric acid and absinthium for the stomach, um, just so that, again, this is supporting the liver and gallbladder. And then using things like methylcobalamin and methylfolate, uh, in our B12 folate formula because you need to get those methylated forms into the liver and then also you need the folate and the B12 as part of um, liver processing. And why you need all of this is multiple chemical sensitivity is very much about clogging up pathways. So for people that suffer from multiple chemical sensitivity, their, their pathways and their receptors get full quickly and their body just doesn't have the ability to be able to detox and clear things out quickly enough. And so symptoms start and sensitivities start. And so by making sure that things are cleaned out on a very deep level will allow the body's system of kind of clearing the receptors out and not getting so bogged down, so therefore not so sensitive uh, when exposed to chemicals. And chemicals could be very simple things like a scented candle or that Febreze or a Glade plug-in, but it can also be um, colognes and perfumes and scents and um, color photocopies and um, uh, car exhaust and uh, natural gas from the stove. And so there's just so many things that um, a multiple chemical sensitive person can be sensitive to. And um, so the technique is just to always make sure you're cleaning the system out on a very deep level so their bodies can handle um, more coming at them. Mm. Uh, okay, so with the lymphatic system, uh, to come back with the negative emotional, um, the negative emotion, loss of track of the, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> okay, let me start that again. So the associated negative emotion for the lymphatic system is loss of track of the essentials of life. Uh, it's a warning for need of balance, the un inability or unwilling to forgive, and maybe re perceived not receiving joy or love from mother. That's deep. <laughs> so lymphatic system, it's also deep um, and needs lots of like really lovely, loving care to get people back on track. Uh, an interesting fact about the lymphatic system in general is that there's an individual variation. So between each person, they can have anywhere between 501 to 700 different lymph nodes in the body. And that's a lot of nodes, so uh, lots of detoxification and support is also necessary. Okay, so lymph drop is uh, our main lymphatic drainage formula. And so it works at getting the lymph moving. It helps to support the immune system. It gets the capillaries less uh, permeable to proteins, um, generally improves circulation, and it definitely helps with elimination um, of waste and the toxic load. Um, in addition to lymphatic congestion and congestion type symptoms, edemas and sports injuries, um, Another place that is really important when we're talking about women is detoxification and breast health. A lot of breast um, congestion can be associated with lymphatic congestion, especially since the systems are very closely linked. And so um, for women that are dealing with lots of breast type issues and breast symptoms, uh, lymphatic, congestion, or lymphatic drainage is really essential. The other types of places that you'll find uh, with pediatrics um, kids that are getting a lot of swollen glands or sore throats, um, reoccurring infections often need extra lymph support. Um, we haven't uh, really talked about it, and I'm not going to be able to go into it tonight, but uh, the Peyer's patches in the intestinal tract are also gut-associated lymphoid tissue. And so for kids that end up eating foods that they're sensitive to and that they're not aware of, often you'll start to see that the tonsils start to get enlarged because there's an overload in the gut as far as the lymph system. And so dealing with the gut is really important and <clears throat> addressing um, the lymphatic system to help with tonsillitis is also two techniques you can use. And then finally, of course, um, eczema and allergies and um, skin type um, reactions um, are indicators for uh, lymphatic drainage. And then we have another lymph remedy, uh, LAPA, and it's more of a blood cleanser and lymph stimulator. 
So again, essential for cleaning out wastes within the body, metabolic wastes, die-off or wastes. Um, it helps to move these metabolic wastes from the blood into the kidneys, intestines, and the skin um, to clear it away. It's known as a blood cleanser and purification as far as um, Germany goes. Uh, so it's a very German remedy for these types of things. And it's really essential when you've got patients that tend to have healing reactions when they detox to really help kind of move things along for them. All right, so um, just to briefly touch down, we do have the Nesman Detox Kit. And so this kit does contain liver, kidney, lymph, detox, and drainage, uh, all packaged into a, a nice kit that can be used twice a year with your patients. Okay, so there's three more things I wanna to touch on, and then there's a few protocols that I'm going to also mention, and uh, then we'll be open for questions. Next, we're gonna talk about acid-base balance. And so uh, just to get an idea, um, if this is a new concept for you, Generally, we do live in a relatively toxic and acidic-like environment. Our bodies are excellent at uh, regulating, but when we start to get overwhelmed, then these excess hydrogen ions, which is the crux of the problem with acid-base imbalance, start to accumulate in the tissues. So generally, um, with our blood circulation, um, we have hydrogen ions and they um, can be filtered out through the kidneys and urinated out. Um, if they aren't do that, and there's these buffering systems, these bar bicarbonate buffer systems, then that should help to um, turn it into CO2 so that we can breathe it out. But if our kidneys aren't able to filter it and our lungs are not able to um, do these kinds of conversions to exhale, then we end up with these excess hydrogen ions that get stored in the tissues, in the connective tissues, in the extracellular space, and cause this acid-base imbalance. These excess hydrogen ions then start to create problems in pH and problems with microorganisms because you end up with an acidic milieu or an acidic terrain. An acidic terrain is prone to inflammation, reactions, and increased toxicity. Um, it also potentially lays the groundwork for chronic degenerative conditions. So acid-base balance is really important kind of as a base therapy in almost every protocol that you're doing, not in children, however, but um, kind of 12 and above. And what it will do is it takes out the excess hydrogen ions and it makes our patients less prone to inflammations, reactions, and toxicity overall. And so we talked about lungs as being part of the way for a detoxing process. And so bronca is an excellent respiratory and lung formula. It helps to um, get um, things moving and get the lung tissue um, detoxified. It helps improve oxygen uptake. It helps reduce inflammation. It can also be very helpful in coughs. And um, the herbs that are in bronca tend to be some of the most extensively researched for lung and bronchial conditions. So it can be used for any type of respiratory type conditions. Um, and so this slide really does talk about it in a more symptomatic way, but if you're looking to just do general lung detox um, as part of a detox process, then bronca would be the remedy that you would use. And if you're looking to do acid-base balance, then you'd wanna use an alkalizer. Um, two of the Biomed products um, that we have available our basic tabs and basic powder. We also have Alcala from our Sanum line, and they contain calcium, magnesium, potassium, and sodium. And the sodium bicarbonate and the potassium bicarbonate are the key in any alkalizer to be able to use up the excess hydrogen ions. The thing that's really important to remember when you're working with an alkalizer is you wanna do it on an empty stomach with warm water. We don't wanna interfere with digestion. Uh, and so therefore, when you're taking an alkalizer, you wanna do it at least 20 minutes before food or at least two hours after so that um, the stomach is empty. And then with the warm water, that will make sure that the alkalizer is not sitting in the stomach, but rather is moving to the small intestine where it can get absorbed and do the work that it needs to do. All right. And 
Yeah. Again, um, this as far as detoxification, it's a it's a huge topic, and there's a lot of different avenues that you can go. Um, I really want to focus on the organs tonight. Uh, however, just as a general thing, a healthy internal milieu uh, or healthy internal environment is really kind of generally super important for regulation in the body to stay well balanced. So things like gut flora, uh, healthy intestinal mucous membrane linings, um, and a strong immune system are really important for keeping the gut restored and the milieu restored. Um, so things like probiotics, xanthomycopathics, fermented foods, different diets, uh, essential fatty acids and oils and omega-3s, um, and acetylglucosamine are really important to restore and keep the intestinal lining intact. Regeneration, this is also about the intestinal tract, so keeping food allergens out of the diet, um, and that will give an opportunity for the uh, organs and cells to regenerate. Uh, so you want to remove all processed foods and um, allergenic foods to um, prevent damage of the gut. And then finally, regulation. And so this is the part that's really important for what our talk is tonight. Um, when you're getting the body regulating on its own or self-regulation, it means it's really taking care of itself. And so detoxification uh, through detox organs and heavy metals is something that needs to be targeted, and then deacidification, so acid-base imbalance, which we've just spoken about, and then finally enhancing hormonal and cellular metabolism through good regulation um, and through, let's say, liver detoxification. That's going to help the body stay nice and regulated. So things like alkalizers, detox remedies, um, alkaline components of diet, digestive enzymes are all important for those types of things. And if you're interested in learning more about this, we do have some great webinars that have been um, available on the website um, that talk about this type of thing in much more detail. <clears throat> okay, um, I just wanted to put this in here so that you'll have it in your notes as far as a restorative and regenerative diet. Uh, it's according to Dr. Wortman and Dr. Rao, and it's about removing allergenic foods from the diet and putting in nice alkaline, non-allergenic type foods into the diet. So um, the chart here, um, I'll just leave this um, so that you have it in your notes uh, to refer to um, as needed. And then lastly, what I'd like to talk about uh, as far as detox strategies is candida and heavy metals. So candida overgrowth. Candida, naturally, it's a natural fungus that occurs in our bodies. Uh, for women specifically, it's within the mouth, the GI tract, the vaginal mucosa, and the skin. Generally, populations of candida, if the body is well regulated, um, is kept under control through healthy intestinal flora and a strong immune system. Overgrowth occurs when the flora becomes altered through diet, which can include refined carbohydrates and sugars, alcohol, high stress, antibiotic or antifungal use, oral contraceptive or steroid use, and um, the immune system uh, becoming um, stressed or decreased. And so then uh, when those types of things come into play, candida also comes into play. <clears throat> so to address candida from the regulatory environment in the body perspective, so a non-kill approach, but rather uh, to address balance in the body, uh, the Candida Fix or CanFix kit has been put together. So you've got an acid-base balance in there with basic tab. You've got a probiotic to support the flora. The acid-base balance remedy also helps to reduce inflammation and it supports the immune system. And then you've got the Pleo Alb remedies, which is a specific Candida formula to downregulate and um, reduce candida and fungal overgrowth. Uh, the types of symptoms that you'd be working with uh, are rashes on the skin, fungal rashes, vaginal yeast infections, nail fungus, gas and bloating, brain fog. Those are some typical candida type symptoms or candidiasis symptoms. <clears throat> and so this kit's been put together and it contains these remedies with instructions on how to take it. So you'd be doing the Pleo Alb, the basic tab, and the probiotic on a daily basis for uh, about four weeks. And um, sometimes a patient only needs one kit, sometimes a patient needs two kits to really do that um, re-regulation of the candida and get the environment changed. These 
uh, this approach, it's a German biological medicine approach, and it's really um, important in the sense that it helps with long-term uh, change and um, no rebounding of candida. So uh, ch the change environment approach is really helpful um, to get symptoms back under control for patients. And uh, when we talk about candida, we've always got to also think about heavy metals. Often candida and mercury go hand in hand. Candida <laughs> is known um, to sequester, bind on to heavy metals, specifically mercury. And so sometimes what happens when you see higher candida levels in the body, there's also a high uh, mercury level in the body as well. The candida is actually trying to protect the body from um, Dr. Thomas Rao, he also um, found that candida would be in larger numbers when the milieu or the terrain was also very blocked, um, and in addition to the heavy metal burden. And so detox is also really important. Uh, when we're talking about the milieu, we're talking about the need for the deeper liver, lymphatic, kidney drainage to get the connective tissue um, space to be cleared out because the, path the detox pathways are open. Um, candida symptoms are often the same as mercury symptoms, and there's a positive correlation with candida and amalgams, and finding that in the extractions, there's always candida cultures there where there's mercury is also there. Um, and diverticuli are hotbeds for candida and heavy metals. So with those patients with diverticulitis and diverticulotis, you want to be able to, in addition to do lots of detox, Make sure you're doing heavy metal detoxing and working on the candida. Okay, and so with the heavy metal, so we've talked about the can fix kit being a really great way to address the candida. If you want to address heavy metals, um, specifically mercury, um, then chlorella plus cilantrix or pl chlorella plus cilantro is the combination. Um, the chlorella. Um, as I mentioned, and I also mentioned this for the multiple chemical sensitive patients, uh, chlorella, it is a pure chlorella. It is a binder of heavy metals, chemicals, and pesticides. It's also uh, a complete protein because it has al almost complete protein. It has seven of the eight essential amino acids. Um, and um, it's really good at just kind of generally cleaning the body out. Cilantrix, which is cilantro, is used to mobilize heavy metals. Um, and get it from neurological structures out of the body. And so when you mobilize, you need to bind as well. So this is why you'd use these two remedies in a pair. And so I've got a protocol here um, that is gonna be in your notes. Um, so I'm just gonna briefly uh, touch base on it. So basically you wanna prepare by opening the drainage organs, liver, kidney, lymphatic, um, and also make sure the intestinal tract um, and the bowels are moving. And so once you're done these types of drainage, and often you need to do it for about a month before you start with the actual heavy metals, then uh, you'd have the patient start taking uh, chlorella. So that will help to bind any heavy metals that are already available in the gut um, or any toxins that are in the gut. And as they bind it, and they've done that for a number of weeks, then you add in the mobilization with uh, cilantrix. So the cilantrix, what you do is you start um, by, it's essentially one week on and one week off, and depending on how the patient handles it, so you wanna start with cilantrix, a couple of tablets, uh, up to three times a day, um, and one week on, and then give a break for one or two weeks, and then take it again, so you're pulsing, and as you're mobilizing, you're taking lots of chlorella to be able to bind, bind, bind. And this, um, with heavy metals, it's generally not something that's done very quickly within the body. If you do it too quickly, you can cause a lot of um, aggravated symptoms. So detoxing can take time. Um, six months is a pretty ideal kind of way to think in your mind of doing this kind of rotation where you've got the chlorella and then you're taking uh, one week on and a couple weeks off with the uh, uh, cilantrix. And then one more note. If you are working with something like cilantrix, you've gotta be really careful with amalgams because it can pull from the amalgams. Um, if somebody is having their amalgams removed, you can use chlorella uh, to be able to bind um, before the procedure and after the procedure. And it's always a good idea if somebody's having their amalgams removed to do lots of kidney support as well 
um, just as a good detox. Uh, okay, and then uh, the skin. We definitely need to talk about the skin. Uh, so luvose, it's a luvose mineral earth that is used to bind onto acids, toxins, bacteria, different waste material. It's a highly alkaline, pure mineral um, powder that acts like a pore sponge, um, and it soaks up all kinds of toxins. When you're using it externally, um, you would be putting it on the skin, and so anywhere you want to detox or where there's a rash, um, it increases by by putting it onto the actual wound, then and allowing it to dry. Not only is it soaking up the toxins, but it's also bringing more blood supply to that area as well. So it can be used topically for acne, burns, edema, ulcers, wounds, uh, herpes, um, lesions, lymphatic inflammation, eczemas, rosacea, psoriasis, dermatitis. dermatitis. And in Germany, uh, Luvos, the specific brand of Luvos, it's known as the number one over-the-counter acne treatment uh, for topical um, um, application. Uh, you mix it in, so it's a powder, and you mix it with water, and then you apply it to the affected area, allow it to dry, and then you rinse it off with warm water. And this can be done on a daily basis. Um, and so when people are dealing with rashes, uh, fungal rashes, um, eczema rashes, uh, acne um, type um, outbreaks, uh, Luvos is really great at being able to work topically to absorb those toxins while you're also doing the deeper work within the body. And so there's three protocols that I want to go through, and then I've got one big question for you. Uh, and then, of course, um, the, the floor is also going to be open to questions. Okay. So first, let's talk about osteoporosis. I know we've been talking a lot about detoxification. However, osteoporosis is a function of toxicity. However, it's maybe not what you've necessarily thought. It's a function of acid-base balance or toxicity due to too much hydrogen ions. Um, so osteoporosis, it's an impaired structural metabolism of the inorganic and organic bone mass. Um, Often it's associated in the medical profession as a deficiency in calcium, but rather it's an increased acidification of the tissues and often due to high consumption of protein-rich foods. Um, when there's excess acid in the body, the body then also is naturally trying to buffer that with the minerals and so pulling minerals like calcium from the bones to do this type of buffering. And so this is where this bone weakening component comes from. And so it is a function of acid-base imbalance. So how then to naturally tackle osteoporosis or to help start to reverse it um, is you need to use an alkalizer, and that part is really, really important. Um, to um, first start with alkalizing, and then um, add bone sure in. And so bone sure is a bone building um, formula, and it also increases collagen formation. Um, it works by increasing bone mineral density, and it helps to reduce osteoporosis. Uh, so not only can it be used for people who have osteoporosis, but also for people at risk of osteoporosis. And the Bone Sure formula, it has a number of other minerals and vitamin D and um, boron that's going to be helping with calcium and magnesium to really start to build that bone back up. And then in addition, you can add our brand new formula, MK7D3. So MK7 is a form of a very stable form of vitamin K2 and um, D3 drops. Uh, the benefit with the K2 is it helps to take calcium out of the blood and move it into the bone matrix. And so vitamin K2 uh, in MK7 form plus vitamin D3 together work to drive and get calcium and minerals into the actual bones and so strengthening the bones. So that's why um, in patients that you're working on their bone health, you would want to have a formula like that. And then, of course, you want to finish it up with a restorative diet that's alkaline, full of minerals, and lower in animal protein overall. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's our osteoporosis protocol. Uh, hormonal protocol uh, for hormonal acne, uh, there's a couple of things to think about. Um, 
Luvos, as we just talked about, is great to kind of soak up the toxins and the excess oils on the skin, but this is a deeper issue. And a lot of the time, if it's got to do with hormones, you need to balance the hormones. So female tonic is a hormone balancer formula that we have. And then in addition, you need to work on the liver because the liver is going to be what's processing the excess hormones that are happening during puberty um, or during any kind of hormonal cycles um, where acne is showing up. So the combination of female tonic plus um, a liver remedy, a hepatica, those two are super important. Um, adrenal support is also really important because often that there's some stress um, going on. So ASF can be used as a support formula if necessary, and then the Luvos powder can be used topically um, and um, to help um, clear the skin up as well. So you're working internally and externally. Okay, and then finally, um, here's my big question for you. Uh, <clears throat> And I wrote this question at the very beginning of the write-up um, of the webinar when we first announced it. Uh, and this question is, are you willing to challenge the idea that normal aging conditions may not be part of the normal aging process? Uh, I decided to ask this question at the end of the presentation rather than at the beginning because um, I wanted to really review and talk about detoxification, acid-based balance, looking at emotions, and helping to um, have some tools to be able to deal with some of these toxic emotions and looking at other things that also need to be detoxed in the body. There is this idea that um, the normal aging conditions, that uh, we're going to get arthritis, that we're going to end up with osteoporosis, that we're at one point, uh, the statistics are one in three, but I believe it's coming down to one in two um, are going to get cancer. Are these truly normal aging conditions? Um, but, or is our normal aging process not necessarily needing to go down that road? Are our normal aging conditions that we're considering really more a function of a body that needs a lot more support to get back into regulation? More detox support, more drainage support, more reducing inflammation, more reducing stress loads and getting the autonomic nervous system back into balance, more acid base um, balance so that inflammation doesn't sit on top of it. And, um, my personal belief is that we should all potentially have the ability to age in a very healthy way and that these conditions that society generally has set as normal um, maybe aren't so normal after all. And so if we can support our personal bodies and then also the bodies of the patients that are coming to us in the best way possible, we're also going to be able to give them the best chance to stay healthy and as symptom-free as possible as the actual true normal healthy aging process happens. So with that, I thank you so much for um, listening to Essential Detox Essentials for Healthy Women. And if you have some questions, please um, type them into the Q&A section and I will um, start to get to those questions for you now. <clears throat> All right. Um, so the first question is about lymphatic drainage um, with breast cancer patients or post-breast cancer treatment patients. <coughs> lymphatic, lymphatic drainage and breast cancer, um, it's a very good question and it, um, to some degree there's two um, thoughts and kind of camps on that. Is One is this idea that if you're doing lymphatic drainage, you could spread the cancer throughout the body. Um, from the biological medicine perspective, the idea is that the breast cancer, um, or the, sorry, the process of um, this formation is often due to a congested body that needs to be detoxed in order for the body to get back into re-regulation and for the body to be able to take care of itself and kind of reverse this process. Uh, Dr. Melina Roberts, um, she did a talk for us on the cancer process, as she calls it. And she talks about reversing the process that's in the body that could have an end result as cancer. So with that said, um, if you're coming from the European biological medicine approach, um, there 
is the idea that you want to be doing um, lymphatic drainage in such a way that you're helping to get the body less congested overall. Um, so I hope that answers your question. Um, okay. <clears throat> and okay, so for female tonic, um, the dosing for female tonic, there is a few ideas for how to be dosing with female tonic. And it really depends on what's going on generally in the body. Um, so the German recommendation is half a teaspoon two to three times a day. I know that in some camps it's also recommended to go up to a teaspoon a few times a day. Um, so it really depends on the patient and hormonally kind of how intense the symptoms are. Uh, my personal recommendation would be to do the half a teaspoon two to three times a day. Um, and then also depending, if you're dealing with a patient that has a lot of PMS type symptoms, then they can be doing the female tonic from um, ovulation to menses, so just for that two-week period. However, if it's just hormonal in general and maybe not so specific to PMS symptoms, then they can be doing the female tonic uh, for the entire month. So there's um, some ability to adjust dosing depending on what's going on with the specific patient. Okie dokie. Um, Janet made a comment, our bodies need to more support to survive the present additional stressors. I 100% agree. Um, as we, especially city dwellers, um, we are dealing with a lot and our bodies are dealing with a lot. Uh, but with that said, I think that it's also very um, doable to make sure that we can stay in a really healthy, regulated way. And it takes some diligence. It makes sure, making sure that we are addressing the stresses in our lives, that we're breathing well, that we have opportunities to be um, relaxed, uh, that we're eating good food, we're drinking good water, uh, we are eating with the seasons. And so in the spring, when all those dandelions start coming up, that's a good time for a, dan or a, for a liver detox. Um, making sure that our bodies are in good acid-base balance. And when we need to fine tune all of these things, we do it. We do gallbladder detoxing, we do liver detoxing, we do lymphatic detoxing, uh, we do hot and cold showering, we um, tune up with uh, basic tabs as needed. And so all of these things will definitely make sure that we can continue to support our bodies so that we can handle the stresses as they come to us. Um, I also do believe when you deal with the deeper emotional stuff, because emotions can really get things clogged up in the body as well, and sometimes symptoms are a reflection of this congestion. And so dealing with our emotional burdens um, and getting us back into a healthier um, space mentally and emotionally, that will also put less stress on our bodies as well. Thank you so much for joining the Detox Essentials for Healthy Women webinar. And I bid you all a wonderful evening. Take care. Bye-bye.